Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our worship service. Special welcome to guests here today. Happy to have you here. Uh, everyone, please take a moment, if you would, to sign our friendship register during the course of the service. We'd certainly appreciate that. Uh, as we get toward the season of Advent, the beginning of December, we, we start to talk a little bit about the end of the world. Uh, the readings start to trend toward that. And uh, just a quick reminder th today from Daniel, there's going to be trouble before the Lord comes again in glory. But ultimately, the triumph is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we look forward to him and, and say with the church, come quickly, Lord Jesus, and take us home to heaven. So that's kind of the focus today. Service is printed in your service folder. We're going to begin with our opening hymn. Stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be our redeemer and savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first scripture lesson for this morning is from Daniel chapter 12. Daniel here sees the eternal life, that, uh, the promise about eternal life that we will receive. God will raise the dead for us to live in the glory of God's presence. This lesson will serve as the sermon text for this morning. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. 
We'll join together in the first two stanzas of hymn 819. second scripture reading is from Hebrews chapter 9. You might say the entire book of Hebrews compares the Old Testament to what Jesus has done and shows again and again how Christ is infinitely superior. The point of comparison in this lesson you'll hear is the most holy place. The most holy place was where the Ark of the Covenant was in the tabernacle or the temple uh, the temple when it was built in Jerusalem. It was the place where the high priest went to offer the special annual sacrifice. He had to do it every year, but the special annual sacrifice on the Day of Atonement. Jesus is way better. He didn't have to go to that man-made one, but he went before God himself and offered a perfect sacrifice for us. This lesson reminds us why we can live with confidence that we have eternal life because we have a Savior who went before God himself and offered the one perfect sacrifice of himself. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. The word of the Lord. God. Our junior choir will now sing two songs for us.
Please stand for the gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson for this morning is from John chapter 5. Jesus is, of course, the one speaking here, and he talks about the promise of eternal life for us. We know it's a promise given to those who believe in Jesus Christ. He will raise us to live forever, and so gracious is our Savior. So This is how he sees us, that as he describes the people who will be in heaven, he talks about us doing good, Sinners that we are, he sees us as doing good because the Lord Jesus has so purified us that that is how he now sees us. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn number 889.
Grace, mercy, peace are all yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of our Savior, Jesus, fellow redeemed, uh, you don't have to raise your hand this morning, but uh, i got a question. How many of you have ever been to Seattle? Never been there myself, but heard a lot about Seattle. If you're going to travel to Seattle, probably should what? Go see the Space Needle? That's there. The place where they throw the fish back and forth, a pike something, pike place plaza. They throw the fish and catch the fish. First Starbucks is in the city, city of Seattle. You probably shouldn't leave Seattle also before you see what they call the gum wall. You ever heard about the gum wall as in chewing gum? Uh, somewhere in Seattle, I think it's downtown somewhere, there's a movie theater. Back in the late 90s, people would see the movie, come out of the movie theater, take out their piece of gum, and squish it into the brick wall that are, it's around that area in, a, in an alley. And people, you know, they just kept doing it. The movie theater workers would try to scrape the gum off the brick wall, and that helped for a little bit, but... Over the years, it just got thicker and thicker and nastier and nastier. Can you imagine? Nasty bubble gum and chewed up gum, just you know, squishing that into the bricks. They said, on average, uh, there's like 180 pieces of gum on, you know, the bricks are like this, 180 pieces of gum on each brick. The city workers have to come in once in a while in their like hazmat suits or whatever, rubber boots and the whole get up and blast the gum off with pressure washers, 260 degrees. And, you know, I thought about the gum wall, and I wondered, you know, how many of us don't feel like a piece of gum at times, right? That's been squished up against a brick wall. You, you ever chew gum, you know, and it, you got the flavor there for a while, but then the flavor fades. Is that what your life feels like sometimes, where the zest, the energy, the zeal is all gone from life? You're kind of just going through the motions. It's one thing after another, problems, pain, setbacks, suffering. You know, at Disneyland, they got a problem with gum too, right? I heard that after Disneyland closes, they've got people scraping off the gum on the sidewalks because people don't want to see it. Sometimes we just don't want to see the pain. We don't want to deal with the problems that are just inside and robbing us of our joy. You know, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you've never been depressed, if you've never been sad, this text is not for you. You can probably just take a nap for the next 15 minutes or so. But if you've ever dealt with things, if you're dealing with something right now, maybe it's a family problem or a financial problem, it's bad news from the doctor, whatever it is, something that's just stealing the joy from your life, sucking the energy out of you, you feel like a piece of worn out gum that nobody wants. This message is for you. Jesus is coming. Let us rejoice. And let's ask ourselves the question, are we ready for it? Our text begins, takes us back about 2,700 years or so into the life of a man by the name of Daniel. Daniel was a prophet of the Lord. And Daniel had been through some stuff. You remember the story of Daniel? Daniel. When Daniel was about 17 or 18, Babylonians came and completely laid waste to the city of Jerusalem, burned down that beautiful temple with all the furnishings where they worshiped the one true God of the Bible, just dust and ashes. Daniel was carted off to the foreign land of Babylon where he languished. I mean, he did okay, but never saw his homeland ever again. Can you imagine 
brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't have to deal with that, do we? We don't have to deal with soldiers storming in here, chopping up our baptismal font, and then gathering us all together and carting us off to a foreign country. What terrible times Daniel was living in. And then you get to Babylon and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember, kids, that story? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they shoved them into that fiery furnace because they refused to worship a false god. Daniel, when he was about 80 years old, what does he get for his faithfulness to serve the Babylonian government? He gets thrown into a den of hungry lions. And why? Because he refused to stop praying to the one true God of the Bible. Daniel's life was so rough, so much pain there. And then, the Lord comes to him through the uh, archangel Michael. And he says, Daniel, there's going to be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. You know, I have to wonder what was going through Daniel's mind when he hears those words. His homeland is totally trashed. He's living in a foreign country in captivity. He's under constant surveillance and threat from his enemies. How could anything possibly get any, any worse? And yet the Lord comes to him, a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. It's coming, Daniel. Things are going to get even worse. And so it begs the question this morning, well, when is that time of distress? Well, the Apostle Paul writes in 2 Timothy, kind of gives us a couple more details. He says, but mark this. This is before Jesus comes. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. So people, let me ask you, when you hear those words from the Apostle Paul, when you hear about Daniel and what the archangel had to say to Daniel, you have to ask yourself, are we living in this day of distress right now? Are these the end times? Well, nobody can say with absolute certainty, but you have to wonder, don't you? You know, when, when you read like I did in an article not too long ago, in an article that said in Asia and in Europe and in the United States, 88% of people recognize the golden arches of McDonald's. 88%. You know how many of those same people recognize the cross of Christ? 50, 50%. When you hear something like that, you have to wonder, are we maybe living in that time of distress? When you have Christian people, or so-called Christian people, in the visible church, actually championing sin, right? They're promoting sin. They're standing up and promoting things like abortion and homosexuality, violence, rebellion. You have to wonder if we're not living in the last days. Or just look at your own life, right? Swimming constantly against the tide of unbelief in this world. It's exhausting, isn't it? You know, the devil, I think, has learned that he doesn't have to send soldiers in here to chop things up and disrupt our worship. He can just wear us out of... Uh, uh, over the long haul, right? The devil knows that when it comes to sin, there's not a lot of people stopping you today, is there? 
It used to be back in the day when there was at least a veneer of Christianity in our country. People would get upset by sin. They would get shocked by sin. But that's not the case anymore. People promote sin. If you engage in sin, it's just so easy today, isn't it? In fact, half the time people are encouraging you to sin. You sin, you stray away from the Lord. There's hardly anybody who comes up to you and gets into your face, even gently and lovingly, says, what are you doing? In fact, sin has become such a nasty word that we kind of bristle against it, right? How many times hasn't it happened? You and I, we've been doing something that's sinful, that's contrary to the word of God. We're not ready for the the Lord's return at that moment. Someone has approached us and called us out on the carpet and we get angry. It's always everybody else's fault. It's my parents' fault. If they were better parents, it's my spouse's fault. It's the church's fault. And very rarely, brothers and sisters in Christ, will you and I just own up to it. Just own up to it. Yes, I've sinned. I've fallen short of the glory of God. Isn't that what it means really to be ready for the Savior's return? Just to despair of our own righteousness. To say, Lord Jesus, I'm not worthy to even call upon your name and yet you've redeemed me, you've called me by my name, you've shed your blood to pay for every one of my sins. Jesus is coming. First thing we need to realize is there's going to be trouble. Lots of trouble before he comes. But let's not send you away empty-handed today. You know, people, the Lord doesn't just write stuff down to drive us to despair, to make us navel-gaze and worry about our sins and, and leave us under a cloud of guilt. He writes these words for our comfort, doesn't he? Let's listen again. Let's break it down a little bit. Daniel has this vision. Michael comes to him in this vision. Yep, time of distress, but... At that time, when the Lord Jesus comes again in glory with all of his holy angels, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Isn't that just beautiful? You know, sometimes, talking about gum, I don't know about you, but I felt like a piece of gum on the sidewalk at Disneyland or or smushed up against a brick wall, forgotten, forsaken? Does God know what's going on? How many of you here, let's be honest, you've got problems, you've got a lot of them, you've got setbacks, the family maybe is a wreck right now. Does the Lord know about that? Does he care? Is he going to come and provide me some relief and help? Or maybe it's a lingering health problem. One doctor after another, it's all bad news. Does the Lord know the depth of my sorrow? Does he know my loneliness? How many of us are lonely here? What a beautiful reminder, brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord knows, doesn't he? And he cares. And when he returns in glory, if we're still alive... He's going to pick you out. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, your name is written in the book of heaven. Written there by the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you on Calvary's cross when Jesus was damned to pay for your sins and my sins. So that each and every day when we wake up and we move about and we go about our business, every day is a day of mercy and grace and forgiveness. Jesus knows doesn't he? And on the last day when he comes again, he's going to take us home to heaven. The day is going to come when Jesus says enough grief, enough pain, enough heartache, enough sorrow, and he's going to take all of you from your troubles to triumph in heaven. 
Let's read on. Daniel says here, the vision says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. What's going to happen on the last day when Jesus comes again? It says right here in black and white, there's going to be a mass resurrection. All those people who have died, their bodies are in the grave. All those people who have died, their souls are in heaven. Their bodies are going to be raised. All those people who died and didn't give a hoot about Jesus during their life, and they're in hell, their soul's in hell. Their bodies are going to be reunited with their souls. And brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, will get these beautiful, glorified bodies Bodies like the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection, not subject to the laws of physics, right, probably. Beautiful bodies, perfect and holy, fit for heaven. At the same time, we're told, unfortunately, some will go to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Boy, we have to be ready, don't we, for the Lord's arrival? What a horror show. What a nightmare. It's going to be for those people who rejected Christ when he comes. No second chances. No redos or do-overs. When Jesus comes in all of his glory, imagine having the eternal shame, being in hell for all eternity where it never, ever ends. The pain, the suffering never, ever ends. And having that shame over and over of just saying, you know, why didn't I listen to my spouse? Why didn't I listen to my kids? Why didn't I listen to the pastor or that teacher? Why did I make it all about myself? Why didn't I simply just humble myself and accept my sin and my guilt and turn to Jesus for forgiveness and repentance? They'll have just suffering, contempt, and hell. But finally, brothers and sisters in Christ, you who are loved by the Lord, who are ready for his return, who practice daily repentance, who go to the Lord on your hands and knees, so to speak, and say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me the sins I've committed. Forgive me for the times that I messed up. Forgive me for the times that I took my family and shoved them to the side. Forgive me for all those times when my priorities were more important than you. Jesus says you're fully and freely forgiven for all of that. My blood cleanses you from all sins. And then he says, you're going to shine like the stars. Isn't that beautiful? You think of all the people, your, your relatives who are in heaven right now who died in Christ, that mom, that dad, that grandparent, that brother or sister who just wore themselves out so that you could have a Christian education. You think about that, they're shining like the stars. That grandparent, that mom and dad who sacrificed so that you could have a better life than they did, who took you upon their knees and told you about the love that God has for you in Christ Jesus, they're shining right now. And by the grace of God, you will too. So doesn't it just make you marvel today? The fact that God and His grace would take you and me, covered as we are by the grime of sin, and actually tell us you're going to live and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. Doesn't it just give you goosebumps this morning to realize all the mistakes I've made, all the sins I've committed, it's all been erased and deleted by the blood of Jesus Christ. And as Pastor Wempner said earlier, The Lord Jesus, when he sees me, even today, he just thinks about the good stuff, doesn't he? And when you're in heaven, just the good stuff. The glass of water you got your kid in the middle of the night. The time you took to help your kids with their homework. The sacrifices you made so that they could hear and learn about Jesus Christ. 
you're going to shine like the stars. And finally, doesn't it lead us all to say with the members of the early Christian church, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus, and take us and your whole church from troubles, the troubles of this world, to the triumph of heaven. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue now with the singing of our next hymn, which is hymn 952. pray. Lord, we give these offerings in the confidence that you graciously accept and use them for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fill us with such confidence that we joyfully give you faithful offerings and willing service at every opportunity. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we'll speak a uh, special prayers on behalf of three people. Uh, for Shelley Nardi and Doug Miller, they are members of our congregation, both undergoing some uh, health concerns. And then also for Kevin Franz uh, at Vi Franz's, she's a member here, her son, who's also undergoing some health issues. We pray. Lord Jesus, preserve your church throughout the world and keep us ready for the time when you will return in glory. Lead us to proclaim with zeal your coming to the ends of the earth. As we joyfully await your triumphant return, give us a, a confident faith that allows us to endure the trials of living in this world that has been stained by sin. Bless all pastors and teachers, O Lord, that they may proclaim the truth of your saving word, which will never pass away. Give faith to all who hear that in Christ they may have the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, uphold all in authority, 
especially the President and Congress of our United States, the Governor and Legislature of our state, and judges at all levels of government. Graciously enable them to lead according to your will and for our good. Holy Lord, the blood of Christ gives us confidence to enter the most holy place and to draw near to you with true hearts and in the full assurance of faith and forgiveness. Look with your grace and mercy on your servants who are in difficult or trying times, those who are in prison and those who are sick, especially Shelley Nardi, Doug Miller, and Kevin Franz. According to your kindness, give them recovery and ease their suffering. Through your word, lift them up in faith to find renewed strength so that they can they may continue on the path that you have chosen for these, your children. We continue to give you thanks, O Lord, as you have blessed our Building Hope program. By your grace, bless our plans, for they are for your glory. May we be bold, both in our gifts, but also in a faith that awaits your timing for the fulfillment of our plans. Give to our congregation, O Lord, the, no, the joy of knowing Jesus Christ, who died and rose to conquer sin and death, and who, who now rules all things at your right hand. Keep us in this joy until one day you bring us to the glory of your presence and the perfection of heaven. We make all of our requests in the confidence of your love and the peace of knowing that your will is always best. Amen. We'll continue with the next hymn, hymn number 546, Since Our Great High Priest Christ Jesus. pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
One God now and forever. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn, hymn number 881. Good morning again. Welcome. If you, as was mentioned at the very beginning, if you haven't had a chance, please sign our uh, friendship registers at the end of the pew. Uh, look down if it hasn't been passed down. Somebody's not doing their job. Politely remind them. Uh, I've got a couple of announcements I need to add and highlight. First of all, uh, thank you to everyone who had their pictures taken this past week for our photo directory. If you didn't get your picture taken, I have good news. We got another date scheduled, a makeup date. Some people were sick, different events happened. Uh, Tuesday, December 3rd. So put that on your calendar if you didn't get your picture taken. That's the day you're getting your picture taken. Uh, there's sign up sheets on the back table that'll sign if you need that info. So please sign up for that. Uh, note some special worship services coming up. Thanksgiving, same service offered twice on Thursday evening at 6.30. I'm sorry, Wednesday evening at 6.30, Thursday morning at 9, and then the following week we begin our uh, midweek Advent worship, and uh, there's, a si there's sign-up sheets on the back table there uh, for the meals that we'll be having between the services. So if you'll be able to even just come or would be interested in helping, take a look at those sign-up sheets back there. Uh, I've been asked to make just a quick announcement. Uh, we prayed for Shelly Nardi just to give you a, a real brief update. Uh, Shelly's suffering uh, from cancer. She is under, right now it's home health care, so she's at home. Uh, so continue as we prayed today, continue to pray for God to be with her, uh, certainly demonstrating her faith in the way she's dealing with it, but, but needs that support in prayer. So please keep her in your prayers. Um, yeah, this announcement's just for one of you. We found a key last week here at church. If you're that one person, I have it.
come and see me. I will be happy to give it away. And then uh, finally, thank you to the junior choir for singing. Appreciate that. And note, there's an announcement in here about uh, our junior choir is great. I'm not trying to. But the seminary chorus, if you've never heard the seminary chorus sing, that's uh, men who are studying to be pastors in our synod, our seminary is in Mequon. Our seminary chorus has their uh, Christmas service concert coming up on uh, Sunday, December 8th. I'd encourage you to go to that if you've not gone to it. It's a, it's a very well done concert, and I'll add just my quick editorial. They do it at 3 and 7. 3 o'clock is a packed house. Like, you need to be there really early. The 7 o'clock one, you can show up at 7 o'clock and there's seats all over the place. Take that for what it's worth, but I'd encourage you to go. It's, it's a very well done concert.